Dodger baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, FSN Prime Ticket presents the Dodgers as they take on the San Diego Padres. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you, wherever you may be. Here at Dodger Stadium, we have Heroes Night, memorial to 9-11 of 2001. The Dodgers and the Padres, meanwhile, in their own little world of baseball, the Padres leading the Dodgers in the wild card race by two and a half, and the Dodgers have troubled against San Diego. Padres have not only won nine of 15, they've won seven of the last nine. The Dodgers also look, however, at the fact the Padres have lost four of the last five games they've played on the road. And the Dodgers at home recently have won seven of the last eight and four straight. A lot of numbers to remember. What we do know, there's 19 games left starting with tonight. Jake Peavy, he is 8-1 and one lifetime against the Dodgers, 2-0 and oh this year, and the Dodgers haven't beaten him since 2003. But keeping the memory of 9-11 alive, right now let's go to our Dodger public address announcer, Ladies and Eric Smith. Gentlemen, that is now that is now. a moment of silence in honor of the many victims of the tragic attacks on September 11th, 2001, and also those who have lost their lives serving our country at home and overseas. A baseball season is a marathon, not a sprint. Yes, 162 games, six-month marathon for the right to play in October. And those 182 days of competition are a winding road full of ups, downs, and surprises. And with the completion of each game, the season moved closer to where we stand today. Coming down the stretch where every pitch and every swing could be the difference in seeing the Dodgers play in October. A point where baseball, a game of numbers, boils down to these. 19 games remaining, two and a half games out of a playoff spot. Yes, the baseball season is a marathon, but the final stretch begins next. change with five quarts of Pennzoil and a Fram filter for just $12.99 at AutoZone. It's the Toyota Tent Event. There's big savings under the tents at all 58 Toyota dealers in Southern California. Get 3,000 cash back or zero APR for up to 60 months on a new 07 Tundra with a 4.7 liter V8. There's even 2,500 cash back or zero financing on a new 07 Tundra Crew Max with a powerful 5.7 liter V8. Don't miss the Toyota Tent Event at your Southern California Toyota dealer now. Dodger Baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It's in the MLB, is it in you? By Nissan and your Nissan dealers. And by Carl's Jr. Introducing the orange shape made with real scooped ice cream only at Carl's Jr. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Tuesday evening to you, wherever you may be. <laughs> Welcome to Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers and the San Diego Padres beginning a collision, the first of six games here, where the Dodgers host the Padres for three, followed by three against Arizona. For San Diego, last year at this stage, they were 74 and 68. Right now, they are 77 and 65. Last year, remember, the Padres finished strong, winning 14 of their last 20 games to edge the Dodgers in a tiebreaker. And as we open it up tonight, the D-backs leading the Padres by three and a half, the Dodgers by six, and in the wild card, San Diego leading the Dodgers by two and a half. 
So for the Dodgers, all the talk, all whatever is behind, especially all the numbers, and now it's push again, shove to decide just where they will wind up in this 2007 season. A rather touching pregame ceremony on this September 11th, the first Tuesday since 2001, when we bow our heads in memory of what happened on that day. There was a nice touch in the ceremonies before the game, among other things. They had quite a few of our heroes, and they all are, on this Heroes Night, and they were speaking to us from Diamond Vision and from Iraq. Meanwhile, as the Dodgers, the Padres, and the crowd try to forget for a few moments the awful moments on this day and concentrate on a child's game that has given all of us so much fun down through the years. So for San Diego, here are the names on Bud Black's card as they try to maintain their distance in the wild card and even try to catch Arizona. Brian Giles leading off in right field. Jeff Blum is at second base. Mike Cameron in center field. Adrian Gonzalez had an 11 game hitting streak snapped on Sunday. Khalil Green will be at short. Kevin Kuzman off at third. Termel Sledge is in left field. Milton Bradley on Friday strained a right oblique when the team was in Colorado, so he does not make the starting lineup tonight. Instead, Termel Sledge. The catcher, the switch hitter, Josh Bard, and on the mound, Jake Peavy. On the mound for the Dodgers, the veteran Esteban Loaiza. He is 1-0 this year. He beat the Cubs. He is 1-3 lifetime. That victory against San Diego occurred back in September of 2005. The Dodgers are hoping that a former 21-game winner with the White Sox four years ago will retain some of the magic to keep them alive in their pursuit of San Diego. Brian Giles, Jeff Blum, and Mike Cameron will be the first to test him. And among other things, Brian Giles just won for eight against Esteban Loaiza. In fact, Giles, as he steps in, is struggling a bit. He has just three hits in his last 19 at bats, hitting 289. And he takes a strike, and we're underway. 0 oh and 1. The thing that Esteban Loaiza did in Chicago was throw strikes. He walked one man. Strike one pitch is off the plate and a one ball one strike count. In the seven innings he allowed three earned runs one walk and three strikeouts. The one one pitch Giles takes off the plate ball two two and one the count. The temperature at game time a lovely seventy five degrees. Loaiza into his windup and the 2 1 pitch on the way. A change, but that's high. Ball three, three and one. Brian Giles facing Esteban Loaiza, and Giles, 10th best on the road with a 311 batting average, takes a strike, and the count three and two. Giles had a little five game hitting streak, but that ended the other day. But he has hit safely in six out of eight and eight of his last 11. The 3 2 pitch instead, Giles backs out for the moment. Meanwhile, we can tell you the Rockies are playing the Phillies. They're in the bottom of the ninth inning, and the Rockies are leading 8 to 2, and Giles takes ball four. So Loiza, who walked one man in seven innings in Chicago, opens up by walking the very first man that he faces. We'll set the Dodgers defensively for you. And with the leather, you have Loney and Kent for Call and Garcia Parra, Gonzalez Pierre and Deepier, and the battery of Loiza and Martin. For Rafael for Call, had a day off on Sunday, and he's now back to his familiar position as Jeff Blum shows Bunt and takes ball one. One and zero. Oh. Helicopter like a hovercraft just staying right over the ballpark. We had a flyover, three helicopters going by right after the national anthem. One and oh, the count to Jeff Blum hitting 248. Jeff takes outside, so Loiza is not doing what he did in Chicago. He walked Giles, and he's behind the Blum. Jeff, a switch hitter, and better numbers left handed. The two and oh, the count. Back comes Loiza with a breaking ball low. Ball three, three and zero. Oh. For Grady Little and Rick Honeycutt and all of the Dodgers, they know full well 
They cannot afford to fall behind by much. Not against Jake Peavy. Out of a stretch goes Loiza, the 3 0 pitch in for a strike. Peavy's last outing, he gave up eight earned runs. But remember that last outing, he pitched on three days rest against Arizona. He is well rested for tonight. Three and one to Jeb Blum. Four home runs, 26 runs batted in, and he takes ball four. The plate umpire, James Hoy, with Angel Hernandez, Mark Carlson, and Darrell Cousins. So two on, nobody out. And now for Esteban Loise, he begins to wade into the deep water. Mike Cameron has been struggling. Two hits in his last 20 at bats, but that really doesn't mean anything as he checks in at the plate. Those are just numbers. He has 19 home runs, 74 runs batted in. The so Cameron right hand batter two on nobody out. But wise his fastball is fouled back and the count 0 and 1. So Mike Cameron started off the year very very slowly and that's when the Padres couldn't get it in gear and then all of a sudden Cameron did get it in gear and the Padres took off. Very dangerous of course you remember the grand slam he hit in San Diego against the Dodgers. Strike one pitch on the way is taken for another strike. And the count 0 and 2. Cameron, 3 for 16 against Loiza. That translates into a 188 batting average. So Giles at second, Blum at first, nobody out. Loiza in a very dangerous spot with Adrian Gonzalez on deck. Adrian shakes no. He'll be 36 the end of December. And the right hand already. A look again back at Giles. Now the strike two pitch to Cameron is taken just off the plate with a fastball and the count one and two. Cameron, kind of a feast or famine hitter. He has 19 home runs, but he has also struck out 141 times. That's tops by plenty on the ball club. So Cameron waiting. Loiza with two strikes on and comes back one two and it is swung on and missed and down he goes. So Cameron trying to go after a fastball off the plate. Mike turned and went back to James Hoy as if say did I swing at a strike. They all do that. And he got whatever answer that James Hoy wanted to give him. So one out and now Adrian Gonzalez the left hand hitting first baseman. So Adrian as he checks in does not have any at bats in the past against Loiza. So a San Diego boy facing the young man from Tijuana fastball is off the plate ball one. The Rockies defeated Philadelphia eight to two. So the Dodgers in the middle of a sandwich. They have Philadelphia in front of them at the start of the night and Colorado right behind them. One ball and no strikes. Gonzalez takes low, though now Esteban Loiza is behind 2 0. Oh. The Diamondbacks are playing the Giants, Edgar Gonzalez and Kevin Correa, no report yet. Giles at second, Blum at first, one out, first inning, no score. Set is Loiza back with a fastball that's fouled away and a two and one count. For Adrian Gonzalez, he is another free swinger. He has 26 home runs, 86 runs batted in, and he pays the price. He has struck out 122 times. One thing he doesn't do is hit into double plays. He is only grounded into five all year, and he's an every day, every inning guy. So Adrian waiting. Loiza set at the belt. Another look back at Giles, and the 2 1 pitch, and that is off the plate, ball three. Hitting behind Gonzalez is Khalil Green. So Adrian waiting on a three and one pitch. Tough spot for the pitcher. It is certainly a hitter's count. Adrian waiting. Loiza comes back three one. It swung on and fouled away. And the count three and two. Adrian had an 11 game hitting streak that was snapped in Colorado on Sunday. But he has hit safely in 18 of his last 20. And he's right up there in the National League. 
And he has Khalil Green hitting back of him. Now let's see what the runners do. Remember, he has struck out 122 times. Runners are not going, and the pitch is a check swing. No swing for ball four, and the bases are loaded with one out. So Esteban Loaiza starting off on a bad note. He has a pitch that wasn't close. Gonzalez started to swing but held up. So the bases loaded one out and Khalil Green coming up. Khalil Green has been red hot. He is hit in 10 of his last 12, 17 of his last 20, and carrying it out, 18 of his last 22. And Green takes a look at ball one. The Loiza can't find the strike zone. He has walked three, he has struck out one. Dodger infield is back in double play depth. And the 1 0 pitch on the way to Green is taken low. Ball two. So Russell Martin going out to the mound to talk to him. But for Loiza walking all these people, he has now made 23 pitches, and Grady Little has gone out to talk to him. Khalil Green has struck out over 100 times. But again, Khalil Green is the kind of a fellow who can furnish some power. He has 20 home runs and 78 runs batted in. In fact, the last thing the Dodgers want is to get into a slugging match with the Padres. As far as home runs are concerned, San Diego as a team has hit 142. The Dodgers as a team, 107. So now, Loiza in a mess. Two balls and no strikes to Green. Bases loaded, one out, and we're just starting with Giles, Blum, and Adrian Gonzalez out there. The 2-0 pitch to Khalil Green is fouled away, and the count two and one. Khalil Green, in case you wonder, has grounded into 10 double plays. That would be second on the club to the switch hitting catcher Josh Bard, who has grounded into 15. Padres have beaten the Dodgers seven of the last nine, but they've lost four of their last five road games. 2 1 pitch to Green is swung on a high fly ball to right. Tagging up is Giles and Blum. The catch by Ethier. He guns it back in, but scoring is Blum. Is uh, Giles. Blum holding it second. And the Padres are on the board, leading 1 to nothing. So Khalil Green skies to right deep enough to cash in Brian Giles. Good strong throw. Andre Ethier playing right field has nine assists this year, and he wisely made sure that Jeb Blum would stay at second. So it is one to nothing in favor of the Padres, and the batter will be Kevin Kuzminov. Boy, is this a different hitter from the young fellow we saw back in May, and the numbers really stack that up. Loise already in deals, and the first one is strike. Back on the uh, 7th of May, Kuzminov was hitting 108. To get to his present 251 batting average, he had to hit a very solid 288, and that's what he's done. Kuzminov, 15 home runs, 61 runs batted in. Strike one pitch, and that's a little low. One ball and one strike. So Loiza making a lot of pitches here in the first inning. In his seven innings against Chicago, he made 96 pitches. Padres lead one to nothing on three walks and a scoring fly ball. Loiza set at the belt, and the 1 1 pitch on the way, swung on, hit down the right field line, foul, and a 1 and 2 count. So Kevin Kuzminov trying to add to the one to nothing lead. He has Jeb Blum at second. Adrian Gonzalez at first. Kuzinov among the rookies in the league. Third in RBIs, fifth in hits, fifth in extra base hits. So he's having a fine first year. The one two pitch to Kevin is just inside under the hands. And you have a two ball, two strike count. Loiza kind of shakes his head. His body language tells you he feels he's being pinched a little bit by James Hoy. He hasn't hollered or anything else, but that last pitch, you could see him shake his head. Oh, no. So Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on. One nothing Padres. Loiza's fastball is a flare over a leaping can into right field. Scoring is Blum. 
Going to third is Gonzalez. He is out on a strong throw by Andre Ethier. However, Blum scores, and it's a two-run inning for San Diego. So at the end of half an inning, Padres two, Dodgers coming up. Esteban Loaiza makes 30 pitches, walks three, gives up a scoring fly ball and a single, and it's two to nothing, San Diego. Dodgers trying to come back now for Call Pierre and Loney, Kent Gonzalez and Martin, Ethier, Garcia Parra, and Loaiza. And on the mound, what is there to say about Jake Peavy that we haven't said already? He's hollering over to Kevin Kuzminov, look for a bunt. And for call steps in takes a look at the first pitch and it'll cost a strike and PB again wants to go over talking to Kuzminov. So Kuzminov is well in on the grass. Adrian Gonzalez up about even with the bag at first and the strike one pitch on the way is a fastball away one and one. Rafael hitting 270 five home runs 45 runs batted in. But he was really carrying a heavy weight on his shoulders on the recent road trip. He swings, hits a ground ball to the right side. Jeff Blum stays with it to throw him out. And just like that, the Dodgers won out in the bottom of the first inning. For call, just to conclude the thought, was six for 38 on the road trip. That's a 158 batting average. He had a stretch where he just drew a whole bunch of blanks. And if Raphael is struggling, if he's not going anywhere on the base paths, usually the Dodgers aren't going anywhere. Now the batter is Juan Pierre with James Loney on deck. And Peavy's pitch is a little low and away, ball one. In looking at the Dodgers, the fellas who have had some success against Peavy. Pierre is only hitting 208 against him, 290 against the lead. Juan takes away ball two. The Dodger attack would certainly be on the shoulders of Nomar Garcia Parra and Luis Gonzalez. They're the two who have had a great deal of success. PB delivers fastball strike and the count two and one. His strikeout to walk ratio, he has 58 walks, 210 strikeouts. The 2 1 pitch is swung on and fouled away. Peavy's earned run average is 2.4. The opposition is hitting 207 against him. He is 8 and 1 lifetime against the Dodgers. The only time they beat him was way back 2003. The 2 2 pitch, Pierre pulls a ground ball to Blum and just throws him out. So just like that, two meat ground balls, two down, and James Loney coming up. Now here's the thing if the Dodger left hand hitters can handle Peavy they're going to be in a lot of trouble and the Dodger right hand batters are Kent Martin and Garcia Parr. Now Jake Peavy has held right hand hitters to an average of 166. Now Kent has been very successful against right handers so is Martin so is Garcia Parr. So we'll see what they do against Peavy. James Loney takes ball one. But I guess what we're really saying is if the left hand hitters can't do it, they had best not rely on the right hand hitters who really make the Dodgers go. The 1 0 pitch is swung on and missed, and the count 1 and 1. It's not been all beer and Skittles for the boy from Sims, Alabama. He's had his problems. They tell me he was a scrawny teenager, rail thin arms and legs. He's 6'1", 180 now. 1-1 one, one pitch is fouled away down the line out of play. When he was in high school, Peavy had a lot of physical problems. He was sidelined with a broken ankle he sustained, fell into a ditch while he was out jogging. He cut his left hand severely while taking out the trash. He sliced a heel when he stepped on an open suitcase. And he cracked a rib, the result of jumping up and down during a postgame celebration. However, here he is trying to win his 17th tonight. The 1 2 pitch is swung on, popped in the air foul, racing over his Josh Bard right by the Dodgers dugout to put it away. So for the Dodgers, for Call Pierre and Loney can't hit the ball out of the infield, and those are the left hand hitters. 
So Peavy walks off with a small smile, and at the end of an inning, hot race two, Dodgers nothing. Padres leading the Dodgers 2-0 behind their dugout Hall of Famer Dave Winfield and up of the plate is Termel Sledge young man from Granada Hills and takes a strike and the count on one we will repeat Sledge is playing left field because Milton Bradley strained a right oblique Friday night in Colorado Sledge fouls it away Termel hitting 210 seven home runs 23 runs batted in. And if you joined us late, Loiza, who walked one in seven innings in Wrigley Field, walked three in the first inning, gave up a fly ball for a run and a flare single for another. The strike two pitch is strike three called. So Sledge walks away empty handed. One away, strikeout number two for Esteban Loiza. And the batter now will be Josh Bard. Josh Bard, two for three, including a home run against Esteban Loaiza and Bard has been a tremendous acquisition for San Diego hitting 264 three home runs 43 RBIs and promptly bangs one into left field for a base hit. So Josh Bard comes up with the second Padre hit they're leading two to nothing and Jake Peavy will be coming up. Jake Peavy. Jake Peavy with the bat and he is certainly called upon. He has a half a dozen sacrifices but he also has 14 hits and he strikes out well 13 times and he's had almost 70 plate appearances. So he's pretty much of a contact hitter shows bunt and drops it foul behind the plate. Oh and one the count. No balls in one strike Glenn Hoffman sending forth the sign whether he's going to be bunting or not. Josh Bard over there at first held on by James Loney and Bud Black at the wheel the fine major league pitcher a fine pitching coach and now having a great job as manager of San Diego Peavy around the bunt gets it down Loney's going to pick it up and flip it to Jeff Kent so the sacrifice works taking second is Bard and with two down in the second inning they'll leave it up to Brian Giles. So Peavy, who does it all as he tries to win his 17th, goes back into the San Diego dugout. Giles struggling, as we told you, three for his last 19, but he drew a walk and eventually came home on a scoring fly ball to right field. So Brian waiting, and the pitch of the left-hand hitter in the dirt blocked nicely by Russell Martin. One ball and no strikes. Game one of the three-game series, Tomorrow night, Justin Germano for San Diego, Derek Lowe for the Dodgers, and then the concluding game, Greg Maddox and Chad Billingsley. The next one is Lowe. So Loiza very much off his feed, two balls and no strikes, falling behind to one major league hitter after another is certainly not the way to get it done. The 2 0 pitch is low, ball three. So for Loiza, He's got to improve his control and he better do it right away. He kind of heaves a little sigh out there on the mound. On deck, Jeff Blum. Three and older count. Giles waiting. A look back at Bard and a 3 0 pitch is swung on. A high fly ball to right. Ethier at the track. It is gone. The green light, Brian Giles, 3 and 0, and the Padres lead 4 to nothing with two out in the second inning. So Brian Giles, who had a lot of home runs earlier in his career, then of late seemed to have lost the touch and now has certainly regained it and certainly does it at the right time on a 3 and 0 pitch. So he got the green light and used it. And the Dodgers now find themselves down four nothing as Blum takes a strike. For Brian Giles, back in his Pittsburgh days, he had as many as 38 home runs. Last year he hit only 14. Now nine in his last 28 games to give him 11 for the year. So the Dodgers have to be in shock 
Padres jumping on them four to nothing. And of course, Loise, there's no way you can pitch behind to all big league hitters sooner or later. They'll take the laces out of your shoes, and that's what Brian Giles did on that 3 and 0 pitch. So for Grady Little and Rick Honeycutt, they're not only down four nothing, they're down four nothing about against as good a pitcher as there is in baseball. And Loiza now goes to ball three. So Jake Peavy, tough enough at any time, but already leading four to nothing. Now the three one pitch by Esteban Loiza, and the right handed deals a strike, three and two the count. When he was with Pittsburgh, I remember saying, Sadder Loiza. Well, tonight it could very well be the same thing. Young fella from Tijuana into his windup and the 3 2 pitch on the way, and that is ball four. The Jeff Blum walks a second time, and Loiza has walked four, given up three hits and four runs. And he keeps shaking his head as if to say, I'm being pinched by the plate umpire, I think. Now he also scratches his head as if say what do I have to do to get a strike. So Loiza after walking Blum faces Cameron who struck out in the first inning. Cameron two for his last 21 and Loiza's first pitch in for a strike on one. So the Dodgers have won seven of their last eight here at Dodgers Stadium including four straight but they will really have to Pull off not a miracle exactly, but they're going to have to have one of their better games if they're going to get out from under with Jake Peavy. The pitch to Cameron is low and inside, one ball and one strike. Four walks, two singles, and then the huge home run on a 3 0 pitch. One and one to Cameron. Loiza again set. Esteban delivers, and that's fouled away off to the right out of play, and they count one and two. One thing the Dodgers know they cannot give the pitcher the luxury of trying to find himself and find the strike zone. So DJ Holton gets up in the Dodger bullpen right away. Well, Loiza gave up two in the first inning, two more here in the second. This will be his 50th pitch. And it's swung on and missed by Cameron to strike him out a second time. But 50 pitches and four runs later, he walks off. A big home run by Brian Giles, and the Padres lead four zip. The cat from El Cajon, 36 year old Brian Giles, hits a two run home run on a three and 0 count. Four nothing San Diego. And Jake Peavy working now on Jeff Kemp. And Jake's first pitch stays on the inside corner for a strike, and the count on one. Now, remember, we told you Kent Martin and Garcia Parra have all done well against right handers, but Peavy has overwhelmed the right hand hitters in the league. They're hitting 166 against him. Kent fouls it away, and the count 0 and 2. One thing the Dodgers have a chance if they get on base is their speed burners, their rabbits up atop for Carl and Pierre, and then down the bottom a bit, Russell Martin. They all run and they can all steal bases. And Martin drives one into right field, uh, Kent does, and Gonzalez and then Martin coming up. The one thing that the numbers tell you is that you can run on the Padres. And as far as Jake Peavy is concerned, the opposition has been successful 19 out of 21. But you don't expect Kent to be running, but you would expect Pierre for call, Martin, but they have to get on first. So Kent will lead off single to right, and the battle will be Luis Gonzalez, who has had very good success against Peavy in the past. Luis hitting 353 against him including four home runs. PB ready and deals and the first pitch in for a strike up and on the outside part of the plate 0 and 1. Gonzalez got a pitch down homered at AT&T Park on Saturday. Strike one pitch with Kent at first nobody out. Gonzo has a look at an off speed breaking ball that drops in for a strike and the count 0 and 2. Slider in the low 80s. 
No balls, two strikes. Peavy set at the belt. Kent short lead at first. Jake ready and delivers, and Gonzo takes it inside and high. Ball one. So Jake Peavy going up against Luis Gonzalez. Luis hitting 280, 13 home runs, 60 runs batted in. Peavy at the belt. Another look at Kent. The pitch to Gonzo is fouled back, and the count remains one and two. PV has just blossomed into an outstanding pitcher and one reason the fact that he spends a lot of time with Greg Maddox Jake out of a stretch another look at Kent long look now the one two pitch Gonzo takes low and away two balls and two strikes PV from Sims Alabama. And the master Greg Maddox who will be pitching in the final game of this three game series sitting back watching him work Maddox as you know 50 some odd innings without allowing a walk makes it look easy and then you see Esteban Loaiza walk three in the first inning. Here's the 2 2 pitch coming up and that's taken outside ball three. So remember Peavy's numbers 58 walks. 210 strikeouts. Jake out of a stretch. Martin waiting on deck. 3 2 pitch, and that is inside ball four. So the Dodgers now with a crack in the door, down four to nothing as Bud Black with his arms folded out his chest sits back and watches. The batter will be Russell Martin. Russell Martin has not had any success against PB at all. Russell has just two hits and hitting 125 against PB. So four to nothing San Diego and the Dodgers trying to get out from underneath. The sky fell down on him when the Padres scored two in the first and then two more in the second. So Martin checks in PB out of a stretch Jake ready and delivers Martin punches one on the ground slowly to Adrian Gonzalez he's on the bag for the out and the run is moved to second and third So Gonzo to second Kent to third one away and Andre Ethier will be coming up Andre Ethier hasn't had any success against PV but of course there aren't very many in the league who have had any success against him he has held the opposition at 207 and right handers to less than 166. So Ethier who made that strong throw to pick up his 10th assist when he got Adrian Gonzalez at third base in the first inning now has a chance to help the club offensively fouls the first pitch off and the count 0 and 1. Ethier is just three for 16 against PV. PV against the Dodgers. The Dodgers are hitting 209 against him, and he averages just a hair under nine strikeouts per nine innings. He works off the plate, one ball and one strike to Andre Ethier. So PV in a little bit of trouble, but leading four to nothing. Dodgers at second and third with one out. On deck, Nomar Garcia Parra. Peavy into the windup, and the 1 1 pitch is swung on, fouled at the plate. Ethier got a little of it on his right foot, and the count 1 and 2. So Andre trying to walk it off. Meanwhile, Josh Bard going out to talk to Jake Peavy. Padres got two in the first. Three walks to load him up. A scoring fly ball by Green picked up one. Kuzman off a flare single to right for the other. Then in the second inning, Josh Bard single, and with two out and a three and oh count, Brian Giles green lighted and hit a home run. Though so it's four nothing Padres. Dodgers have a chance to cut the lead in half, but they need a base hit badly now against Peavy. Jake looks over at third now goes to his windup. The one two pitched Ethier is swung on and missed. Looked like a high fastball 
at about 93. So down goes Andre Ethier. Peavy challenged him. Yep, let her high fastball and nail him. And now with first base open, no more Garcia Parra. Garcia Parra is one of the two Dodgers who have hurt Peavy at all. Look at that. You can read his lips. Walk him. That's what Peavy said. Walk him. And now Bard gets up out of the crouch. Yeah, Peavy was hollering at his catcher. Ball four. Walk him. Walk him. And finally, Bard got the message. Said, well, okay, you're the boss. He didn't ask, didn't look. It was just Peavy calling his shots. So Garcia Parra draws the walk. And of course, Esteban Loaiza, the pitcher, is coming up. So Peavy has reached that stage. He's not waiting to be told. He didn't want Garcia Parra. Nomar hitting 333 against him with a home run. And he will take his chances going against Loaiza. So Peavy has walked two, given up a base hit. And with the bases loaded and two out, here is Esteban Loaiza. Loaiza was one for three in his at bats in Chicago. Peavy into the windup. Jake deals and a breaking ball hits the inside corner. Oh, and one. Little slider about 80. Not a hard slider. Oh, and one to count. Jake looks over a third at Kent. Now to his windup. And Loaiza backs out. No balls and one strike to count. With Peavy, it's a fastball. He has a curve. Very good slider and a changeup. Strike one fastball is grounded foul outside of first. 0 oh and 2 the count to Esteban Loaiza. So Kent single to right. Gonzalez walk. Martin a little dribbler to first. The big at bat was Ethier. Second and third one out. And Andre struck out. Then they walk Garcia Parra intentionally. The strike two slider is down and dirty, blocked by Bard, and a new ball put in play. One and two, the count. So PV going after his opposite number as an escape hatch. Kent at third, Gonzalez at second, Garcia Parra at first. And now the one two pitch to Loiza is chased and missed. Slider down and away. So Peavy strikes out two. The Dodgers get one hit and leave three. And at the end of two, Padres four, Dodgers nothing. Mother and daughter, a beautiful pair of blonde hair and the little one with her hair and pigtails and a big delight playing high fives with her dad perhaps. Anyway, nice scene in the stands as we go to the third inning. Not a nice scene on the field as far as the Dodgers are concerned. Padres lead 4 0 in the third. It'll be Adrian Gonzalez, followed by Khalil Green, and then Kevin Kuzminov. Gonzalez walked in the first inning, tried to go from first to third on Kuzminov's flare single to right, and Andre Ethier threw him out. Gonzo, big swing and a miss. 0 and 1 to count to Adrian. Four runs, three hits for the Padres. If a walk is as good as a hit, well, that's the key. Four walks. And the Padres have been able to cash in two of them as Adrian fouls it away. Though it's still no balls and two strikes. Adrian with 26 home runs, 86 runs batted in, hitting 279. Loiza, both feet on the rubber, looks down to get a sign. Now Esteban ready and delivers, and it's a fly ball to right field. At the other end of it, he's into his glove, and we have one out in the third. Say, friends, you know, Thursday night, September 27th at 7:10, the first 50,000 fans that come to see the Dodgers and the Rockies receive a fleece stadium blanket, compliments of Time Warner Cable. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com or call 866-Dodgers. One away and Khalil Green at the plate. A big swing and a chopper foul outside of third. 0 and 1 the count. Khalil Green. Fly ball in the first inning deep enough to pick up a run. By the way, Khalil now has 10 scoring fly balls. 
Carlos Lee has 13. Khalil Green and Garrett Atkins each have 10. So he's a dangerous 250 hitter, that's for sure. He's also 20 home runs, 79 runs batted in, and swings and lifts one into deep left center field. That goes Gonzalez. I'll say dangerous. Green hits it out, and it's 5 0 San Diego. So Khalil Green trotting out his 21st home run, his 80th run batted in, and for the Dodgers, Esteban Loaiza is sadder if not Loaiza, and it's 5 nothing Padres. And Green really got a hold of that thing, golfing it halfway up the pavilion in left center. It was a breaking ball, and Green was all over it. So now the batter is Kevin Kuzminoff. Who had a flare single in the first inning, good enough to drive in a run. They're still scrambling in the pavilion for Green's home run. So Loisa delivers, and that's fouled away, 0 and 1. So we're in the third inning, and the Padres, five runs, four hits. The five runs are bad enough, but let's face it. I mean, five runs down to Jake Peavy, you are asking for an awful lot. 0 oh, and 1 to count to Kevin Kuzman. Loise's fastball is low. One ball and one strike. Dodgers in danger of falling three and a half games back in the wild card. The 1 1 pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Realistically, I don't think the Dodgers are looking at the division race. The D backs and the Giants scoreless in the third. Should the D-backs win, the Dodgers would find themselves seven back of Arizona. Kuzman off a drive to center field, and that one is gone. San Diego Padres hit three home runs in two and a third innings. It is six to nothing in favor of the Padres. And what a sad picture we had just flashing on the screen. Rick Honeycutt standing by the phone as Kuzminov went down and got a pitch below the knees and hits it out. And of course, for San Diego, you remember when they had the suffered the indignity here of the four home runs and then the game winner. Well, right now they're relishing what has happened so far. Rick Honeycutt going out to the mound to talk to Loiza, but what is there to say? Hang in there. Not much else. Five runs now six. DJ Holton is loosening up. Six runs, five hits, no errors. Dodgers no runs, one hit in the third inning. So Kevin Kuzman off, going down to get one below the knees, and the big guy hits it out. Kuzman off 16th home run of the year. The crowd is booing that they are not taking Loiza out of the game. So Gonzalez a fly ball to right, Green homers, Kuzman off homers, and the batter is Termel Sledge, a left-hand batter. So deuces are wild, but unfortunately for the Dodgers, they're wild on the scoreboard and all in favor of San Diego. Two in the first, two in the second, and two in the third. Strike one pitch, a big swing and a miss. So the only two guys to swing and miss. Cameron has struck out twice and Sled struck out his first at bat. Now the strike two pitch on the way is taken, strike three call. So both Sledge and Cameron bite the dust to give Loiza four strikeouts. And the batter will be Josh Bard. Josh Bard single a left in the second inning. And he was aboard when Giles hit a 3 0 pitch into the bleachers. Loiza into the windup. Esteban delivers a strike and the count 0 1. When the Dodgers come up in the third for Call, Pierre, and Loney. Strike one pitch, and that's taken another strike. 0 2. Bard with Jake Peavy on deck. Now the strike two pitch, and that's fouled away. Peavy in his last start, remember he came out there against Arizona on three days rest, gave up eight earned runs. 
And that of course was the word throughout the league. That was absolutely shocking. Well the Dodgers have to come up with something like that against him tonight. Here's the strike two pitch on the way. Strike three called. So down goes Bard. Down go the Padres, but not before two more runs on two more home runs. And at the end of two and a half innings, six nothing, San Diego. San Diego all over Esteban Loaiza punishing the Dodgers six to nothing and Rafael for call Juan Pierre and James Loney trying to get back into the game. Jake Peavy ready and deals for call shows bun takes ball one one and oh. Rafael grounded out in the first inning. So for call dead in the water right now six hits for his last. 39 at bats and a one ball one strike count. Big fall off batting left handed hitting 251 batting left. And batting right he's a different hitter completely hitting 322. Doesn't get it one and two the count. I think most people with the ball club feel that what has slowed for a call down completely this year is that bad left ankle. And you can understand why the left ankle would hurt him batting left handed. That's kind of the push off leg. When he's hitting right handed, it's reflected in that 322 batting average. So two and two the count. PB Ready and comes back with a fastball low. Padres have beaten the Dodgers nine out of 15 and seven of the last nine. And Dodgers down six nothing to Jake Phoebe. Three two pitch on the way as a high chopper over the mound down to Blum. It turns throws on a bounce and a great pick by Adrian Gonzalez. So a nice play by the Padre first baseman for call grounding out a second time to Jeff Blum who made a good play awkwardly going to his right and throwing back to his left and he made the play and Peavy hollers nice job. Peavy is a a very very highly competitive player. You watch Jake and you know exactly what he's thinking. You saw him hollering to Kuzman off about bunt leading off the first inning. You saw him hollering three times to Bard about the intentional walk. He doesn't have to do any hollering on Pierre. So if he shuts down the top of the Dodger lineup considering that he eats up right hand batters the Dodgers are stuck for call and Pierre now are 0 for 4 between them and here's James Loney. So the one chance the Dodgers have to get the rabbits on base and then get the rabbits to run. As we told you the league has stolen 19 out of 21 against Peavy. All right here's Loney he fouled out to Josh Bard in the first inning. PV ready right handed deals fastball foul back 0 and 1 the count. With all of his abilities with all of the fact that PB's won as many as 15 games. You realize the task the Dodgers have tonight. As the right hand is pitch is up and in one ball one strike. He's only 26. He was 26 the very end of May. David Wells a teammate said he's old school. He's got a lot of passion. He shows his emotion on his sleeve. He knows he's good. He knows he can be one of the great ones. And at the same time he's still really humble about it. He knows how to do things the right way. That was David Wells quote about Jake Peavy. Two one pitch is hit inside out foul down the left field line two and two. Tomorrow night Justin Germano and Derek Lowe and the concluding game Greg Maddox and Chad Billingsley and then the Arizona Diamondbacks will be coming in. Dodgers against San Diego split the previous six here. They've lost four out of six to Arizona here. Interesting that the Dodgers would do well in Arizona. They'll be there on the next road trip. They've won five out of six over there. Three and two. Loney waits 
James swings, drives it to right. And gone over the wall. James Loney hits it out. For Loney, his 10th home run, 45 runs batted in. Remember, he had that little stretch of three home runs in two games. So his power is really starting to be noticed as he hits that one on a line over the right field wall. Pretty good fastball, but it was out over the plate. And Peavy, with all of his abilities, can still give him up. For Jake Peavy, home runs allowed, however. That is only the tenth home run he's allowed in over 190 innings. So four home runs in his last five. Meanwhile, Ken follows with a little ground ball to Khalil Green, who throws him out, and that's the inning. So the Dodgers get one run, one hit, one swing of the bat by James Loney. And at the end of three, Padres six, Dodgers one. Here's tonight's Aflac trivia question. Other than Esteban Loaiza, who won 21, and Fernando, who's the only pitcher born in Mexico to win 20 or more games in a season? Do you have any idea? Well, we will come up with the answer for you in a little while. Fernando's in the safety of the booth, and Loaiza out on the firing line. Jake Peavy will start it off. Oh, and one. PB sacrificed in the second inning, moving Josh Bard to second, and then Giles hit the three and oh pitch for a home run. 6 1 Padres, fourth inning. High foul off first to Loney. One away. So PV walks away empty handed and Brian Giles. Giles will be coming up. Giles walked in the first inning came around to score. And then on a three ball no strike count. Bud Black let him swing away and it paid off. And probably bangs this one to left center. Pierre is going to have to cut it off. And Giles will hold with a very long single. Second baseman, Jeff Block. You know, the night that the Dodgers had the four home runs in the ninth inning and then the game winning home run in the tenth against San Diego, Peavy in that game went five innings and allowed four runs and nine hits. Now let's see what Grady has in mind. The one out single will bring up Jeff Blum. And Little decides that's enough. In 66 pitches in the first three innings. And now with one out, Loiza will come out. DJ Holton has been throwing in the bullpen, and we'll be back. Dodger baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by Lexus and their passionate pursuit of perfection. And by Carl's Jr. Try the new Patty Melt Burger at Carl's Jr. With the Padres leading the Dodgers 6-1, to one, Esteban Loaiza driven to cover, giving up three home runs. Obviously, his control was totally missing. He walked four. And now DJ Holden picks up the pieces and Blum fouls it away. 0 and 1. So DJ trying to at least keep the Padres quiet. Blum followed by Cameron. 0 and 1 to count. The four walks that Esteban Loaiza gave up, two of the walks came around to score. And remember, one of the home runs, the count to Brian Giles, three balls and no strikes. And there goes Giles. The pitch is strike. The throw is in time to get him. Giles arguing with second base umpire Mark Carlson. Bud Black is worried he might lose his right fielder. 
He wants to get out there. And Black has gotten there in time. He can now talk to the umpire as Giles is cut down. Brian Giles. A break even base stealer anyway. He had stolen four out of eight. And you can see the tag. I heard or read Mark Carlson's lips, and he said he came off. Well, Giles' argument is he's on, he's on, he is off, there's no tag, and now Giles thinks I am back on the bag. So that was the difference. Carlson said he was off. Giles felt he had gotten back on the bag, and Giles loses. So Brian is nailed and with two down Jeb Blum up there with a no ball two strike count. Blum walked twice against Loiza. Ball one. Jeb Blum went to Chino High went to school at Cal like Jeff Kent. One and two. Ground ball to Kent. So Holden comes in. They nail Giles trying to steal. And then Blum grounds out. No runs, one hit, nobody left. Still six to one, San Diego. Padres lead the Dodgers six to one as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Luis Gonzalez. Russell Martin and Andre Ethier. Gonzo walk in the second inning. That's ball one. Chicago and Houston, and of course the Cubs, tremendous interest in their battle with Milwaukee. They are dead even. And Chicago and Houston are tied up 4 4, and they're in the 11th inning. Foul away. PV trying to win his 17th. He is 16 and 6. He has beaten the Dodgers twice this year. He beat him June 7th and September 1. That's ball three. In June, he had a string of 62 innings without allowing a home run, and he beat the Dodgers 6 5. In that game, however, when he left, he was trailing four to one. Earlier in April, PV beat the Dodgers seven to one. And then September one, he was just too much. A two hitter, nine strikeouts, one walk. Pop fly, left side. It will be Kuzman off, the one away. Remember our AFLAC trivia question talking about 20 game winners from Mexico other than Esteban Loaiza and Fernando who's the only pitcher born in Mexico to win 20 or more. And the answer please Teddy Higuera for the Brewers back in 1986. 20 wins. Ball one to Russell Martin grounded out to first baseman Adrian Gonzalez. In the second inning, six-one Padres fouled away. We were mentioning earlier at the start of the game the Dodgers did not want to get into a, a muscle battle in home runs. Padres have hit 145. Dodgers 108. Right, one and two. Breaking ball, a little slider hit off the end of the stick. The Gonzalez feeding PV coming over. So two down. Just an 81 mile an hour slider. It's not like he really breaks right one off. 16. It's Andre just a tantalizing here. pitch. Martin hit it right off the end of the bat. So two down, and Andre Ethier coming up. Dodgers were down four nothing in the second inning. But they had runners at second and third and one out. Ethier going up against Peavy and Andre struck out on a letter high fastball. 
Ball one. That ball might have hit Josh Bard on the foot. One ball and no strikes. <laughs> Two and oh, the candle Andre. Beavy has walked two, one intentionally. On deck, Nomar. That's a strike, two and one. The crowd of Sims, Alabama. Fouled away. We talked earlier about Peavy's problems, how he was hurt so many times in high school. He also has a problem, or did have, with his eyesight. Pop foul out of play. Without contacts or glasses, PB sees a big blur of colors. But fortunately, his eyesight is correctable with the right prescription contacts. He said, uh, it's something I've dealt with all my life. Still two and two. Two and two to Eve here. Two down, bases empty, bottom of the fourth. Andre six, Dodgers one. Sinker swung on and missed, out recorded at first, and that'll be that. Dodgers tiptoe through the fourth, and at the end of four, Andre six, Dodgers one. Six to one in favor of San Diego as Jake Peavy rests. And for DJ Holden, he'll be working against Cameron, Gonzalez, and Green. Fouled away. 0 oh and 1. Cameron has to be glad that Loise is out of the game. He and Termel Sledge have each struck out twice against Loiza. Those were the only four strikeouts that Esteban had. Boy, is that thing hit up. Kent looking for help. Here comes Epier to make the catch. One away. First baseman. Adrian Gonzalez. The one out in the fifth. Adrian Gonzalez walked, cut down trying to go from first to third on a base hit by Epier, and flied to Epier in the third. Fifth inning, six to one, San Diego. Ball one. Adrian, a chip off the old block. His dad, a first baseman on the Mexican national team. His father, David. Padres have made a couple of deals that have been just hard to believe, really. Getting people like Chris Young, Adrian Gonzalez, Josh Bard. Two balls, no strikes. High fly ball, very playable. Pierre's there. Two down. Coming to the plate, shortstop. Khalil Two Green. out in the fifth inning and Khalil Green coming up. Green had a scoring fly ball in the first inning and a home run in the third. The RBIs, Giles has two, Green has two, Kuzminov has two. Oh and two the count. Green last few years slowed down by hand injuries. 
One hit by a pitch, another on a ground ball. One handling a throw at second. Khalil will be 28th of end of October. Born in Butler, Pennsylvania, went to Clemson and lives in Key West, Florida. Big chopper back a third long throw by Nomar on the money. So four in a row retired by D.J. Holden. Nice job. But at the end of four and a half innings it's still Andre six Dodgers one. Padres leading six to one scored two in the first two in the second two in the third managed to hit three home runs along the way. Dodgers now have Garcia Parr to lead it off. First ball swinging as usual. Foul ball. It will be whom? Neither one. Alphonse and Gaston. Bard looked at Gonzalez. Actually, if there's a failure on that play, you know whose fault it is? Jake Peavy. I mean, all Peavy had to do, and he was there, and you know how outspoken he is. All he had to do is direct traffic. See if we can see Peavy. No. He's just looking at the ball. So blame that on PB. Yeah, nice view. And it's his fault. Yeah, it's your fault. One ball and one strike. I mean, there you are with nothing else to do but direct it. So we'll see what Nomar does on the break. One ball and one strike. Ball two. Peavy had made 66 pitches in the first four innings. Lead on a good fastball. By the way, remember Peavy didn't wait for any instructions in the second inning. When the Dodgers had second and third, he hollered at his catcher, walk him, walk him. This time, he has nothing to do but strike him out. And again, Garcia Parra unable to catch up on two fastballs. Four strikeouts now for PB. And the batter will be Delwyn Young. Delwyn Young, born here in Los Angeles, lives in Palmdale, went to Santa Barbara City College. He's only five feet nine, and he weighs 210. He was once a bat boy for the Class A Lancaster Jadhawks, and his father was the team's batting coach. He went to Little Rock High School near Palmdale and then Riverside City College. Right. So Delwyn Young, 25 years old, batting for Holton. 0 and 2. Down in the bullpen, Rudy Cienes begins to loosen up. So he'll be the Dodgers' third pitcher when we go to the sixth inning. 0 oh 2 to Young. Look where Bart is hanging off the outside, and the pitch is high, and Young chased it. The Young strikes out. A reminder you can save $10 off a $25 Lowe's box or infield reserve ticket. With the Dodgers' new E Saber discount. That's 40% off to see the Diamondbacks Saturday at 12.55. All compliments of Coca-Cola. Just buy your tickets online at Dodgers.com slash E Saber. Use the promo code COLA. That's a strike. Five strikeouts for PV. For call 0 for 2. Playing Pepper with Jeb Blum. One and one to Raphael. Average now has dipped under to 269. Promptly hits a hopper. Oh, what a nice stop by Blum. And for the third time, he gets it. So the Dodgers go quickly, and at the end of five, six to one, San Diego.
On this day in 1983, one of the more exciting games I think ever played at Dodger Stadium, and that's saying something. Dodgers and the Atlanta Braves tied up 6-6, very late in the game, full house. Dodgers have Pedro Guerrero at third, sidearm right-hander Gene Garber pitching for Atlanta, and an unknown kid by the name of R.J. Reynolds called up from Double A. No one really knew much about him, and Lasorda decided to put on the squeeze play. As Tommy said, I had no idea whether the kid could bunt or not, but he did. Scored Guerrero. Dodgers won at 7-6 and went on to win the division over the Braves by three games. Let's go back to this one. R.J. later on, when his playing days were over, served as an instructor with the Chicago White Sox. Last we heard, R.J. lives in Sacramento. Rudy Sian as the third Dodger pitcher, and it'll be Kuzman off, Sledge, and Bard. 0 and 1. For the Dodgers and their faithful, a bitter disappointment. Esteban Loaiza struggling behind on every hitter, walked four. Wound up allowing three home runs and gave up six runs in the first three innings. Dodgers unable to recover, understandably against Peavy. Flare to center, base hit. So Kuzminov had a flare to right for a run batted in. Then he hit a home run. Now a little looper to center, so he's having a big night. Remember, we told you back in May he was hitting 108, and he has hit. Better than 288 ever since. So Kevin at first and Termel Sledge at the plate. Kuzminov has one stolen base. High fly ball to Pierre. So one out, Kuzman off at first, and the batter Josh Bard. Number 28, Josh Bard. Bard single a left in the second inning, sacrificed to second by Peavy, and then Brian Giles hit a three and zero pitch for a home run. Josh one for two, hitting 266, three home runs, 43 runs batted in. Foul back. Josh Bard and Michael Barrett doing the catching for the Padres. Bard came to San Diego in the deal with Boston. Doug Mirabelli went to Boston to catch Tim Wakefield's knuckler and the Padres. There's Michael Barrett taking a look watching Bard. Broken bat foul ball. In fact not a broken bat just a lost bat. That one flying all the way back to the screen. 0 oh 2. Josh has an older brother, Michael, and Mike was the one who convinced young Josh at the time to be a switch hitter. And that really was one of the big reasons why Josh made it. He hit 278 for the Red Sox, and then when he came over to the Padres last year, he hit 338. Right three on the corner. Bard shaking his head. Catchers don't like to irritate the plate umpire because they want to get some calls of their own. Pitcher number 44. And Jake Peavy coming up. The last we told you, the Cubs and the Astros were 4 4 in the 11th inning. And the Astros have come up with a run. And Houston beats the Cubs five to four in 11 innings. Fly ball to straightaway center. Pierre is there. All right, Rudy gives up a base hit and nothing else. At the end of five and a half innings, Padres six, Dodgers one. Dodger baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by Jack in the Box, where we don't make it till you order it. 
by Rico. Move your ideas forward with Rico Dependability. And by Southern California Ford. Not just miles per gallon, but more fun per gallon. As we go to the bottom of the sixth inning and Jake Peavy ready to go to work, Brady Clark takes over in left field for Termel Sledge. So Grady ready to go to work out there and so is Jake Peavy with Juan Pierre at the plate. A strike 0 and 1. Juan Pierre two ground balls to Jeb Blum. And that's going to be hit down the left field line base hit Clark just coming into the game comes up with it Pierre on his way for two he is safe at second. Boy that's a risk. Sixth inning down by five but Pierre legs it into a double perhaps also taking advantage of the fact that Brady Clark just came into the game and for Juan Pierre 21st double. For Call and Pierre were a collective 0 for 5, all ground balls to Jeb Blum. And now Pierre legs one for a double to open up matters, and that'll bring a Baloney, Kent, and Gonzalez. By the way, if you're wondering about that central division, the Cubs lost and Milwaukee wins, so Milwaukee beating Pittsburgh one game in front of Chicago. And the strike. Colorado defeated Philadelphia. So the Dodgers, unless they rally against PB and they're down by five, Dodgers would wind up three and a half back of San Diego and tied with Colorado in the wild card. That's a strike. Loney fouled out in the first inning and hit a line drive home run over the right field wall. Jeff Kent on deck. Pierre at second. Khalil Green right back of him. Foul ball. 0 and 2 the count to Loney. James hitting 312. 10 home runs, 45 runs batted in. James wears glasses when not playing. Contacts on the field. And fouled away again. Jake Peavy has put up great numbers against everybody, but in his career, his winning percentage against the Dodgers, 889. That's number one. Earned run average against the Dodgers, 2.2. That's number one. Dodgers hitting 200 against him. And his strikeouts, just about nine for nine innings. Tomorrow night, Justin Germano and Derek Lowe. Germano will come in with a record of seven and nine. Derek Lowe, 11 and 12. 0 and 2. And Loney smokes it into right field. Base hit, but Pierre had a hold up since Blum almost came up with it. So Loney a line drive single and the Dodgers now have runners at first and third and nobody out. Well now the problem for the Dodgers would be Kent and Martin. As we told you right handers were hitting one hundred and sixty against PB. Kent has singled and grounded out. Martin is 0 for 2. In between, Gonzalez has walked and popped up. Dodgers trying to make a charge at PV down 6 1, sixth inning. Nobody out. Hit foul down the line, out of play. Jeff hitting 295. He has 19 home runs, 76 runs batted in. Jeff had two home runs and a half a dozen RBIs in that long trip. Hit 265.
hitting 296 with runners in scoring position, and he has one here with Pierre at third. And that's a flare into right field. That's a base hit. Pierre scores. Loney will stop at second. So the Dodgers trying to dig themselves out. It is Padres six, Dodgers two, and Luis Gonzalez coming up. So Jeff Kemp is two for three. Dodgers on five hits. Now, Luis Gonzalez has good numbers, very good numbers uh, against Peavy. Luis came into the game hitting 353 against Peavy, including 18 hits and four home runs. Gonzo hitting 279, a total of 13 home runs and 60 runs batted in. Two on, Loney at second, Kent at first, nobody out. On deck, Russell Martin. PV faced with his first challenge of the night. <laughs> oh, and one. Gonzo trying to keep it going. Loney at second, Kent at first. No speed out there. <laughs> Off the plate. One ball and one strike. Peavy trying to pitch against Gonzalez's strength as a left hand hitter, basically a low ball hitter. Luis has grounded into 10 double plays. And a little pop fly, curling foul coming over. Kuzman off, leans in, can't get it. The cover of the tarp takes a little play away. Well, Kuzman off comes back with a glove full of empty. One ball and two strikes. So near and yet so far. That far. So Kuzminov back to his position. One and two to count to Gonzalez. Padres six, Dodgers two, two on, nobody out. One and two. Time. Last year. His teammates said Peavy had so much trouble with his eyes, a lot of times he couldn't read the catcher's signs. That's fouled away. However, once he had the proper prescription glasses, it was another story. And he finished up last year, five and three, with an ERA of 2.8. He's been wearing those contact lenses ever since. Loney and Kent are out there. That is inside ball two. And a fly ball to left field. Brady Clark. Runners with nowhere to go. So Gonzo with one out and Russell Martin coming up. Doug Brocale gets up down in the San Diego bullpen just in case. Number 55, Russell Martin. And Russell Martin coming up. Martin came into the game two for 16 against PV, and he has grounded the ball twice to Adrian Gonzalez. So just two for 18 with two on. One out and Andre Ethier are on deck. Padres six, Dodgers two. One ball and no strikes. Martin had a very good road trip. He had 333 with four RBIs. 
One ball and no strikes. Keeping out, making pitch number 95. And it's a good one. One and one. Martin hitting a little over 300 with runners in scoring position and Loney is at second base. Little ground ball to Kuzminov fair ball on the bag doubles him at first and that's the end of the inning. So a 5 3 double play Martin completely tiled up by Peavy and at the end of six it's 6 2 San Diego. The Padres were leading two to nothing in the second inning with a man at second base. Three and oh count to Brian Giles and Bud Black gave him the green light and Giles promptly hit it into the pavilion in right field. That made it four to nothing in favor of San Diego. It's now six to two in favor of the Padres and Giles will be leading it off. Brian thrown out trying to steal in the fourth inning got a little hot under the collar but stayed in the game. And now here's leading off the so Giles Blum and Cameron against Rudy Cienes. Giles who went to Granite Hills High School along with his brother Marcus. Although not at the same time. Brian is 36 years old. So he has Marcus by a few. Marcus is 29. One ball, no strikes. Ground ball to Kent. And one away. So Brian Giles grounding out. Marcus Giles had been on the DL. Back Marcus Giles has been on the DL since August 25th. He had a sprained knee. Brother Brian, you may remember, sprained his knee crashing into a wall. But both Giles are okay. Although Marcus takes this one easy. And Jeff Blum is in his stead and at the plate. Strike. Blum has walked twice, grounded out. He had five assists against for call and Pierre until Pierre doubled in the sixth inning. Pulled foul down the line. Oh and two to Jeb Blum like Luis Gonzalez sharing something in common somewhat of a miracle when you think about it each the father of triplets. Jeff originally selected by the Expos. Six feet three, about 205 pounds. Playing for Chino High, he was uh, a game away from the CIF championship. And one year they play it at Anaheim, next year they play it at Dodger Stadium. That's hooking down the line and goes fair. Home run. We had to watch Mark Carlson on the foul line. And so a towering home run by Jeb Blum. That would be his fifth of the year. It gives him 27 runs batted in. And for the Padres, one way or another, they are returning the favor. A year ago, remember, the Dodgers had the four consecutive home runs and then the game winner in the 10th inning. Well, they have hit, have the Padres four home runs tonight. Giles with a man aboard, Green and Kuzman off with the bases empty, and now Blum with no one on. And the batter is Mike Cameron. Ball one. So Blum feeling chipper about things. Talking about that game he played here, battling for the CIF championship, base hit for Cameron. Blum said he was playing third base and a ground ball went through his legs, and his Chino High School team lost by that run. 
played the rest of his career in high school at shortstop and has become a very solid fixture for the Padres. They give you a little at second, some short, and certainly some at third. Cameron, a base hit to left, and Adrian Gonzalez, the batter, and Rick Honeycutt going out to talk to CNS. Dodgers using Loiza for three and a third. Holden then came in and got an inning and two thirds under his belt, and now CNS pitching the sixth. Roberto Hernandez tuning up because CNS is due to bat third when the Dodgers hit in the bottom of the seventh. Another thing as you look at this game with the Padres now leading 7 2. Jake Peavy has made 96 pitches through six innings. His last game he made 97 in four innings. That gem that he pitched against the Dodgers in San Diego. He went seven innings one seven nothing he made 99 pitches. But before that he had over a hundred pitches. All the way back. To the end of May. For PV 15 games prior to those last two starts, 15 games, he made over a hundred pitches. He made 117 pitches against Arizona. That would be his high. Oh and one. One ball and one strike. For Jeff Blum, his home run hit so high and so far he has reason to smile. The 17th Loge home run. The last one to do that, Matt Kemp, back in the middle of June, reached the Loge. One and two. I guess the, the one I will never forget was the one that Frank Howard hit in the World Series. The lows down the left field line. That was the first one ever hit here. Now there have been 16 more. One and two. One and two, the count to Mike Cameron. Seven to two Padres. Cameron has stolen 16 out of 21. And there he goes. Missed at the plate. Throw down safe. So Cameron steals as Gonzalez strikes out, and the batter will be Khalil Green. Green. Cameron had a pretty good jump. So Mike now has stolen 17 out of 22, and with two down. Khalil Green trying to pick him up. Ball one. Khalil had the scoring fly ball in the first inning when Esteban Loiza walked the bases full. Then Green hit a home run in the third, and they finally got him on a ground ball to third in the fifth inning. 2 1 0. Rudy saying as trying to get one more out they will hit for him in the seventh Hernandez throwing back of him in the pen. Two balls and no strikes. Three and oh. Well now they have to worry. I mean a green lighted Giles three and oh. And Khalil has 21 home runs. On deck, Kuzman off. So they'll have to watch Green 3 and 0. 3 and 1.
Seven runs, nine hits for the Padres. Glenn Hoffman sending out signs on a three and one count. Two runs, five hits for the Dodgers. Off the plate, ball four. So CNS walks a man. Five walks given to the Padres tonight. And Grady making that long walk out. And Roberto Hernandez will be coming in. We'll be back. Quick summary the Padres had deuces wild in each of the first three innings to jump out in front six to nothing. Jake Peavy has allowed two earned runs and remember he's beaten the Dodgers twice this year without a loss. He is eight and one career. The only time the Dodgers beat him was way back in 2003 and for the Padres flexing their muscles tonight four home runs Brian Giles Khalil Green Kevin Kuzminoff and Jeff Blum. So the Padres sitting on top of a very comfortable seven to two lead. Kevin Kuzminoff will be facing Roberto Hernandez. Kevin Kuzminoff is three for three. He had a flare single to right then he had the home run and then a little fly ball single to center in the sixth inning. Ball one. So Cameron at second and Green at first with two out. A reminder tomorrow night Justin Germano and Derek Lowe. Padres are trying to beat the Dodgers 10 out of his 16 and eight of the last 10. One and one. Padres are also trying to get out of a little bit of a funk. They have lost for the last five on the road. One and one. And that gets a wave. Going to third is Cameron. He'll beat the throw and down to second after hesitating goes Khalil Green. Pitch down and away. Russell Martin got the mitt on it, but it squirted away. We'll assume it's a wild pitch. And it is. So second and third with two out. Two and one the count to Kuzminov. Brady Clark is on deck. Seven two Padres. Two and two. Nice crowd on hand. Assume we'll have another good one tomorrow night. The paid attendance fifty one thousand. Six hundred and twenty. Fifty one six two zero. Oh. And ball three. So first base open. Roberto Hernandez with the Dodgers, 10 strikeouts, but eight walks. So he'd been fighting it, and Clark waiting. Fouled off the fastball. Roberto hit 93 on the gun, so he can still throw hard. He's 42. It'd be 43 in November, and as you can see, a bit of a gray beard. Three and two. And a slider in the dirt to the backstop. Cameron scores. Down to third goes Green. To first on ball four is Kuzminov. And the wild pitch in bringing home Cameron. Cameron belongs to CNS, and that makes it now eight to two in favor of the Padres. So here's Brady Clark. Brady Clark checking in at the plate, hitting 227, but hitting 250. Since becoming a Padre, remember Brady was with the Dodgers early in the year. 
Eight runs, nine hits for the Padres, two runs, five hits for the Dodgers. A couple of wild pitches in the inning, and that's ball one. So Khalil Green down the line from third, Kevin Kuzman off at first, and Brady Clark waiting. Little chopper foul. One and one to Brady. Brady left the Dodgers. He signed with Portland AAA. And then the Padres purchased his contract. So he's got Green at third. Kuzman off at first. Josh Bard on deck. Fouled away. Brady Clark made his first start for the Padres in Colorado. He played left field, drew a walk, and he also went one for three. Day before his start, he appeared as a pinch hitter and got a base hit Friday night after Milton Bradley had hurt his side. Wouldn't chase it. Two and two. So there's Milton, who's been out since Friday with that right oblique strain. At the time, it never seems to be serious. You feel a little tug at the rib cage, and then all of a sudden you can't do anything. There's ball three. So three and two, Kuzminov going from first. Down the line from third comes Green. Runner goes, base hit into right field. So Green scores, Kuzminov will stop at second. That run is charged to CNS. So Brady Clark gets a base hit to join the fun. Nine to two Padres down in the Dodger bullpen, right hand to Eric Hull, ready to come in, and it has been a hull of a game. Nine runs, ten hits for the Padres, two runs, five hits for the Dodgers. And Josh Bard coming up. He is the eighth man to come to the plate here in the seventh inning. Padres have scored three. And a strike. So Hernandez came in, had trouble with the wild pitch, then he gives up a walk and a base hit. Oh, and one. That's a strike, oh, and two. Nine runs, ten hits for the Padres. Seven run lead. Ground ball to Kent. He'll carry it and feed for call. Nice bit of footwork by for call to avoid Brady Clark. And for Jake Peavy, a little chewing tobacco to puff up the cheek. Going back to work leading nine to two. San Diego really in command now. They were at command really right after the national anthem. And then they won on a string of two runs in each of the first three innings. And they break it wide open, giving Jake Peavy a seven run lead in the seventh inning. It'll be Andre Ethia, no Mark Garcia Parra. And we will see about a hitter for Hernandez. Ethier struck out twice. One ball and no strikes. And he drips one into left center. Cameron trying to run it down and goes. Boy, he can go and get him with the best of them. But of course, the best catch that we've seen all year, certainly in center field, was by young Rajay Davis on the ball hit by James Loney up there at AT&T Park. But Cameron can make them all day and all night long. So Mike fully extended, backhands it, and then jogs into the pads. One away. Here's Nomar. 
Tony Abreu on deck. Nomar walked intentionally and struck out. Oh, and two. Nomar has yet been able to catch up on Peavy's fastball, and of course, when he is at his best, when he's sharp, he'll catch up on a lot of fastballs. One and two. Nomar had missed 19 games and to try and catch up on a guy like Peavy really tough just did get a little that catch that Mike Cameron made just a moment ago by the way that's only the fourth fly ball against Jake Peavy 10 outs on ground balls. Fastball, a comebacker, really tied him up on it. And that'll be that, the second out. Take a look at the Jake Peavy package, so to speak. It's not like he is overpowering everybody, but he started off with a big strikeout of Ethier. Later on, he went after Loiza, then he got Ethier again on a bad ball. Then he just overpowered Garcia Parra, and the high fastball took care of Delwyn Young. So Peavy is moving nicely along as he faces the rookie Tony Abreu. And that's ball one. Though so Peavy's numbers, the only loss, just about an anniversary, the 13th of September, four years ago. One ball and one strike. High fly ball to left center. Cameron is there. So that'll do it for Abreu and for the Dodgers. And at the end of seven, PB walks off very much in command, nine to two. Nine to two in favor of San Diego, really putting it to the Dodgers tonight. For the Dodgers unable to recover against Jake Peavy he has been as tough as ever and the Dodgers certainly can take the witness stand for that he is done for the night and Scott Hairston who a little while ago this year was with Arizona Hairston will come up and bat for Jake the Peavy congratulating his teammates and they return the favor and Scott Hairston who was a third round pick by the D backs about six years ago son of former big leaguer Jerry Hairston and born in Fort Worth but grew up in Tucson for a baseball reason first ball swinging pops it up and let's see it will be Gonzalez Tony Abreu made the last out for the Dodgers. And now another pinch hitter, Hairston, will make the first out for the Padres. Dodgers have changed the battery when the car stalls. That's what you do. So Eric Hull is on the mound, and Chad Moeller is behind the plate. Ball one to Brian Giles. Walked and scored a run in the first inning. Hit a 3 and 0 pitch for a two run home run in the second, single to center in the fourth, and then grounded out in the seventh. Big night, hitting 292. For the Padres, Adrian Gonzalez is 0 for 3. PB was 0 for 2. Everybody else in the lineup at least with one hit. Little roller to Kent. Two down. And the batter will be Jeff Blum. So Eric Hull out of Yakima, Washington, went to the University of Portland, and he's arrived in a hurry. Last year pitching in Las Vegas, and this year started in Vegas. And now Eric, the fifth Dodger pitcher of the night. And a strike. 
to Jeb Blum. One and one. Peavy, by the way, made 106 pitches, seven innings, two runs, five hits, walked two, one of them intentional, so his control was great. Struck out five. So Peavy's control was in direct contrast to the lack of control of Esteban Loaiza, and that basically was the ball game. Two and one. High chopper to short. Here comes for call. That'll do it. So the Padres go one, two, three, and at the end of seven and a half, Padres nine, Dodgers two. Nine two, San Diego. The Padres maneuver a little bit. First of all, Scott Hairston, who batted for PB, stays in the game in left field. Brady Clark, who had been in left field, moves over to right. And Kevin Cameron takes over with the pitching. Cameron at a Joliet, Illinois, and Shanahan, Illinois, was offered a deal to sign with the White Sox. Instead, he accepted a scholarship to Georgia Tech. He majored in management, eventually signed with the Twins. Fastball, cutter, and a slider. 0 and 1 to Raphael for call. Raphael three ground balls to Jeb Blum. 1 and 1. Raphael hitting 268. 1 and 2. For call, and we mentioned earlier, you have to believe that left ankle has bothered him all the time. Last year, he had 15 home runs, 63 RBIs. He's going to beat that out. Cameron took a long time. So Raphael is aboard for the first time, and the batter will be Juan Pierre. Full swing, almost a swinging bunt. Cameron thought he had time, but he didn't. And Raphael with the bunt, well, with the infield single. Hit number six for the Dodgers, and the batter is Pierre. Two ground balls to Blum, then doubled and scored in the sixth inning. At the very start of the game, we were talking about Jake Peavy's tremendous ability to get right hand hitters out. And it would be up to the Dodger left hand hitters to really give him a bad time. Well, it didn't happen. He kept for call off the base paths. He had Pierre off the first two at bats. And he shut down Gonzalez, who was 0 for 2. And then Andre Epier 0 for 3. So the left hand hitters were pretty much tied up. And that's it. The one left hander, James Loney, homered and singled. 2 and 0. And ball 3 with Loney on deck. Three balls, no strikes. In there. That's another strike, three and two. Kevin Cameron, two and zero, oh, good ERA of two. Strikeout to walks, forty-seven strikeouts, twenty-nine walks, and ball four. Dodgers had two rallies tonight, so to speak. They had runners at second and third in the second inning with one out. But Ethier struck out. Loney homered with nobody on in the third. 
Dodgers had first and third nobody out and had a base hit by Kent for a run so they had first and second nobody out and Peavy shut him down. Gonzalez flied out Martin grounded into a double play. So now for the third time tonight the Dodgers have what you call a rally about a 40 foot single and a walk. So Loney two for three coming up Jeff Kent on deck. Bottom of the eighth inning, 9 2 San Diego. Philadelphia lost, though the Phillies going to stay where they are in the wild card. What would happen if the Dodgers lose this? They would then be tied for third with Colorado. Ground ball, base hit. So here comes for call to score. Clark gets the ball back into Green, and it is 9 to 3 Padres. So James Loney has a big night three hits home run and two singles two runs batted in and the batter now Jeff Kemp. So Raphael is welcomed into the dugout Jeff Kemp single to right grounded out single to right again Joe Thatcher a left hander getting ready in the San Diego bullpen. So Cameron has given up two singles and a walk for a run. Breaking ball strike. Padres nine runs, ten hits. Dodgers three runs, seven hits. 0 and 1. That's a strike. 0 and 2. Jeff hitting 296, 19 home runs, 77 runs batted in, trying to keep the inning alive. Pierre at second, Loney at first, nobody out. Luis Gonzalez on deck. Kent one for one in the past against Cameron. Oh and two. Just off the plate, one and two. Kevin will be twenty eight, middle of December, six one, one ninety five. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. And that's going to be hit towards right, sinking for a base hit. Dodger runners had to be cautious. So all they can do is move up 90 and the bases are loaded with nobody out and Luis Gonzalez coming up and since Joe Thatcher was throwing in the bullpen we figure the left hander will be brought in to face Luis Gonzalez. So Jeff Kent comes up with his third hit all singles to right. Bases loaded nobody out and we'll be back. San Diego leading nine to three. The Dodgers have loaded the bases with nobody out here in the eighth inning. And Olmedo signs will now come up and bat for Luis Gonzalez. Against left-hander Joe Thatcher. Joe is an Indiana boy, born in Indianapolis, lives in Kokomo, went to school at Indiana State, and was originally signed by the Brewers and came to the Padres in July in the deal that sent Scott Linebrink to Milwaukee. So here is signs with the bases loaded as the Dodgers try to get back into the game. 
and that's a soft line drive and no further action. So signs soft line drive to Khalil Green one away. Now Chad Moeller is due up. And Moeller is being called back to the dugout. Matt Kemp is going to come up and hit for Moeller. So Josh Bard going out to talk to Joe Thatcher on how to pitch to Kemp. Matt is hitting 338. 10 home runs, 37 runs batted in. Coming off the bench is just one for eight. Dodgers using left handers Ethier and Gonzalez against Peavy. Ethier went 0 for 3. Gonzalez went 0 for 2, so that didn't work. So now here's Matt Kemp. Meanwhile, Bud Black is heading for the mound. And even though he has a 9-3 lead, remember he had Doug Brocale throwing in the pen earlier. And let's see what he's going to do. He's going to bring in a fresh horse. So Thatcher gave up the soft line drive to Signs. The inning is still very much alive. Heath Bell will be called in, and we'll be back. Dodgers trying to get off the floor. They have the bases loaded with one out. And Heath Bell, who is so tough, especially on right handers, coming in. Right hand batters this year against Heath Bell are hitting 172. In fact, they were so confident of Heath Bell, that's one of the big reasons why they traded away Scott Linebrink to get a left hander, Joe Thatcher. Keith Bell originally signed by the Mets born in Oceanside lives in Tustin and went to what was then Rancho Santiago Community College. It's now Santa Ana. The Dodgers show the film clip the videotape of Kirk Gibson's dramatic World Series home run that stirs him up and here is Matt Kemp. Kemp 0 for 1 struck out in his only at bat against Heath Bell. Right hander 6 3 2 30. And ball one. Kemp hitting 338. Bases are loaded. Pierre, Loney, and Kent are all out there. And inside, ball two on deck, left hand batter Andre Ethier. So Bud Black has used Peavy, then Kevin Cameron, Joe Thatcher, and now Heath Bell. Of course, he's still leading by six. And now Bard wants to go out and talk to Bell. Heath Bell signed by the Mets. His signing bonus, by the way, was a munificent $500. He was a non drafted free agent. He's fought the good fight, and here he is in the big leagues. 2 0. Oh. Chopper foul, 2 and 1. So Pierre back to third. Loney's at second. Kent's at first. One out. Two balls and one strike. Two and two. Two and two. Foul. 
fastball got him and he just blew him away. Interesting thing about Heath Bell when he was in high school they say he could throw 82 to 88. Then when he went to college 88 to 90 and then a few years ago he learned the wonders of the long toss a technique where pitchers throw long distances to build up arm strength. All of a sudden that elevated his fastball and you know what that last pitch to Matt Kemp was 96 miles an hour. All right. Ethier has struck out twice fly to center. So the Dodgers have the bases loaded and nobody out. Bases loaded one out. Now bases loaded two out. Check swing foul. So Bell goes right after Ethier 0 and 2. Bell's strikeout to walk ratio is excellent. 84 strikeouts 23 walks. He used to throw a change up and split his fingers to throw the change and that led to a splitter. 0 and 2. One and two. Ethier struck out with runners at second and third in the second inning, and Peavy got him on a letter high fastball that really jumped up there at the plate. One and two. So Messrs. Pierre, Loney, and Kent wait. Did he? No. Just did hold up. Two balls and two strikes to Andre, hitting 287. With 11 home runs, 58 runs batted in. The big Heath Bell, 6'3, 230. Just did get a little bit of that fastball. And that thing was almost past him. You talk about hitting the fastball out of the catcher's mitt. Almost. That ball went over the roof of the Dodger dugout. Just got a little of it. Hit it inside out. Still two and two. And another foul ball. So the deuces are wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, three on, one in. And the Padre is still holding a comfortable lead, nine to three. Ethier, by the way, 0 for 5 against Bell. Striking out twice in the past. And a hard ground ball off the glove of Adrian Gonzalez. The throw is in time to get him. So Heath Bell just did get by, but get by he did. Hard ground ball covers the bag and he's there ahead of Ethia's desperate lunge at the bag. Dodgers get one, leave three, and it's 9-3 San Diego. Nine three San Diego. Jeff Kemp in uh, Matt Kemp will go into right field and Andre Ethia with a bloody nose will go to left field, but he's grinning about it. You know they have done so many tests and I have read about those tests when you're running to first base a lot of fellows will break stride and dive towards first but you actually lose a fraction of a second by going head first and for Andre Ethier 
as he had his hands out reaching for the bag his face went right down into the dirt the helmet might very well have caused the damage to his nose. So the red badge of courage a bleeding right nostril and Andre Ethier goes into left field. Meanwhile Mike Cameron will lead it off for San Diego in the ninth inning. And for Andre, he'll have the sniffles for the rest of the inning. Cameron struck out twice, flied to right, and then singled and scored a run, came home on a wild pitch in the seventh inning. Mike with 19 home runs, 74 runs batted in. He's been struggling one for four tonight three for his last 24 at bats. Adrian Gonzalez on deck is the hungry hitter 0 for three. Gonzalez the on deck hitter is the only starter for San Diego without a hit. Fly to right fly to center and struck out did walk. In the first inning. Two and one. Ball three. On a night that saw the Rockies beat the Phillies, the Giants have beaten the D backs two to one. So San Diego has not only opened up some room in the wild card, they're just two and a half games back of Arizona. If they hold on to any part of this lead, Chris Young hit a home run his 30th of the year for the Diamondbacks to account for their only run. Sheerholz doubled in Rajay Davis. Pedro Feliz scored on a fly ball. Tyler Walker, the winner. The recently acquired Bob Wickman suffered the loss for Arizona. Brian Wilson got a save. Here's Gonzalez a strike to Adrian. 0 for 3 tonight. Hitting 278 26 home runs 86 runs batted in. Fouled off. Dodgers got a run and a home run by Loney. It took them three hits for a run in the sixth inning. And it took three hits and a walk for one run in the eighth inning. And it was Adrian Gonzalez getting his glove on that sharp ground ball by Ethier. And they got Andre at first with Heath Bell covering. So 9 3 San Diego, top of the ninth. Padres are on the edge of winning 10 out of 16 from the Dodgers, 8 out of 10 of late. So Eric Cole, the fifth Dodger pitcher, Loiza, Holton, Cienez, Hernandez, and Hull. Loiza gave up six runs in three and a third inning, walked four, gave up a home run to Giles, he gave up a home run to Green and to Kuzman, and pretty much gave up the game. When the Dodgers come up in the ninth inning, they'll have no more Garcia Parr to start. Three and two. Off speed and strike three. Big curveball. 70 some odd mile an hour. So Gonzalez strikes out a second time and goes a long 0 for 4 when everybody else has had a party. Khalil Green. Had a scoring fly ball in the first inning, hit a home run in the third, walked and scored a run in the seventh, grounded out. No balls in one strike. 
One on one. Nine to three Padres top of the ninth two out bases empty. That's a strike one and two to Khalil hitting 253. back Eric Hull really gets his back into the pitch right over the top Eric 511 185 fly ball to left center Pierre over shift has come a long way and catches up to it the green a fly ball to center Padres done in the ninth and at the end of eight and a half innings San Diego nine and the Dodgers three. Padres lead the Dodgers nine to three as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning and there's a story here you can run with it Brett Tomko who was two and eleven with the Dodgers will come in to try and get the last three out. And the crowd is very unhappy just to see him. He had an ERA as you can see of more than five and a half. He's had two games under his belt third in relief. The Padres will need a fifth starter maybe five times between now and the end of the year. And for Bud Black he has the choice of Jack Castle or Brett Tomko. Two and oh. The Black brings in Brett here. Didn't want to burn up Trevor Hoffman. Heath Bell pitched the eighth inning in relief of Thatcher. So Tom go two and one to Nomar, who was 0 for two. Two and two. So far, and you can understand after a 19 game layoff, Garcia Parr still has not caught up to a fastball. And normally, he's a wonderful fastball hitter, but down he goes. So now, Chin Lung Hu, the young shortstop, will come up and bat. That last name is spelled H U Hu. Tell you the truth, if you saw him out of uniform, you really might think he's the bat boy. And ball one. But he is a fine young ball player who had a very good year. At Las Vegas, shortstop, strike, one and one. Chin Lung Hu. On deck, Rafael for call. And a high fly ball in the left center field. It's got a chance, and it is gone. Chin Lung Hu hits a home run against Brett Tomko in his second major league at bat. That makes it 9 4 San Diego. And for Jin Lung Hu, his first hit the distance and well struck. The yeah. Tomko serves it up when Brett was pitching for the Dodgers with a record of 2 and 11. He gave up 14 home runs. So that's the 15th home run that he's allowed this year. And that is ball one to Rafael for call. Wow, what a way to start. Second major league at bat. Home run. One and one to for call. One ball, one strike. And a line drive base hit to left field. So the crowd, which loved to boot Tomko this year anyway, in a game where they've been overwhelmed, they're now getting their licks in again on who's home run in the single by Furcall. 
And the batter will be Juan Pierre. Bud Black hollering from the dugout. He has Kuzman off in on the grass. He's telling him to look for Bunt. Now he's telling Adrian Gonzalez get off the bag and be ready. And that's ball one to Pierre. On deck, James Loney. So the Padres have nine runs, ten hits. In their ten hits, they have four home runs. The Dodgers have four runs, ten hits. In their ten hits, they have two home runs. One and oh. Off speed for a strike. And Pierre a little unhappy. Down in the bullpen, and I'm sure Bud Black is annoyed that he has to do it. He has Trevor Hoffman warming up, and that's a base hit to left field. Well, here comes Darren Ballsley to try and counsel Tomko. And the last thing Black wanted to do, he had a 9 to 2 lead, and he's figuring, I can rest my man Hoffman. Now, all of a sudden, it unraveled with Cameron and with Thatcher. He had to bring in Heath Bell. Now, starting Tomko in the ninth inning, Bud sees Tomko give up a home run and two singles. So, one out, and James Loney coming up with Jeff Kent on deck. So what's left of the crowd of 51,620? Trying to see just how close the Dodgers can get. Loney fouled out in the first inning. Then he homered in the third, single to right in the sixth, single to right again in the eighth, hitting 317 and a strike. Raphael for call at second, Juan Pierre at first. Remember, the league has run very well against the Padres. That's popped up. And it will be Adrian Gonzalez. So that's a big out, the infield fly rule. And with two down, the batter is Jeff Kent. Give it up for second baseman, number 12, Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent, three for four tonight, three singles. Kent against Tomko in the past, 319 batting average with a home run. The guy who hurt Tomko the most would be due up next, but the Dodgers hit for him in the eighth inning, and that would be Luis Gonzalez. And ball one. Gonzalez, who can't play now, is hitting 441 against Tomko. With three home runs. One ball, no strikes. One and one. Kent with his three singles all the other way to right field. The one time they got him, he pulled the ball to shortstop. Jeff hitting 298, 19 home runs, 77 runs batted in. Two on, two out, Dodgers down by five. Breaking ball lifted to straightaway center. That ought to do it. Mike Cameron's at the other end of it. And that'll be that. So Tomko pitches a shaky ninth, gives up three hits, including a home run, but no pressure as the Padres wind up winning it 9 4. The player of the game, well, you'd have to look back at Jake Peavy. He went seven innings, allowed two earned runs. Five hits, walked two, one intentionally, and struck out five. Peavy is now nine and one against the Dodgers. Beat him three times this year. The only time they beat him was in September, four years ago. A highlight for the Dodgers: Chin Lung Hu hits a home run in his second major league at bat. But more importantly, now the Dodgers not only fall three and a half games behind San Diego in the wild card. The Padres get to within two and a half games of Arizona. 
Once again, the final score, Padres 9, Dodgers 4. Stay tuned for Dodgers Live, and it starts right now. Good night, everybody. All right, Vin, thank you very much. Hanging out with Steve Lyons. I'm Patrick O'Neill to talk about a bitter defeat for the Dodgers. We'll get to Jim Watts and Kevin Kennedy in our studios in Los Angeles. Let them get a crack at this game. We'll start. Certainly, we do not relish this psycho any stretch of the imagination. Just they came out flat. Lewise in his debut at Dodger Stadium did not have his stuff. Yeah, he didn't have anything. And I mean, he was struggled for it the entire time. Either he couldn't find the plate or when he did, they absolutely let him know when he threw the ball over the plate. Just struggled for location. And when he threw it, Giles had taken him deep. Giles has been hot at the plate, especially with the long balls. Hit nine of his 11 home runs in like the last 28 games. And then Khalil Green, he's got a lot of power. He's hit over 20 home runs. But if you throw a hanging breaking ball in the middle of the plate, it is going to get whacked. And then, as we said before, he also walked four guys. So when he couldn't find the plate, he was in trouble. And then when he did, that right there, Kuzmanov hits a pretty good pitch. That was down and away, was not that bad a pitch. And he just smoked it the other way and out of here. So right now, Loise is going, oh, my goodness. I don't have my good stuff. And they're certainly letting me know it. Now, we all know that San Diego isn't a great offensive team. But they did a great job <laughs> of not. exposing Loiza for, you know, for how no. bad he was tonight. Didn't have his good stuff, and he just couldn't get away with anything. Yeah, and the, uh, the Padres, those three home runs uh, all off of Loiza. Dodgers kind of made it interesting a little bit in the eighth. And then Tomko comes in, and we were hoping for a miracle. Yeah, well, you know, he gives he gives up a home run to who? And that's that's nice. It to gets who? Second at bat. Who? Oh, I thought you were asking. He's not on first. He was out of the yard. He took him deep into just his second at bat. Nice little highlight for him. Sure. James Loney had a, another nice night. He hit a ball, just you know, just ripped the ball the right field straight out of the ballpark. So, you know, here's that ninth inning home run by who? And uh, he's just a little guy, but he's got some pop. He's got, you know, he hit a lot of home runs down the minor leagues throughout his career. And, this is a kid that just went up there hacking. And, of course, uh, we've seen Brett Tomko give up home runs before uh, in a Dodger uniform, and now he, he gave one up in a Padre uniform, but not nearly enough tonight. Not enough offense, not enough disciplined baseball from the Dodgers. And, and if somebody has that ball out there in left field, you know, keep it. You know who. We're going to get the ball to who because <laughs> yeah. he deserves the ball. First hey, hit. Uh, anytime you spot Jake Peavy, six runs, forget about it. Yeah, you can forget about it. I mean, this guy is so dominating. He probably will win the Cy Young this year and, and he's such a power pitcher and yet he has other things to go with it but tonight that's pretty much what he went with uh, w w he had five strikeouts tonight and all of them on power fastballs usually would jump it up in the zone a couple times down but I mean he, it makes it look so good when he throws a fastball about letter high but you can't catch up with it right by it that's Ethier right there can't catch up with it here's the same situation that's a slider down and away that's Lawiza though with the bases loaded here's another slider to Ethier but then climbing the ladder after this fastball just right by Nomar then up in the zone again. Everybody knows that ball looks like you can catch up with it, but you can't do it. And then just for good measure, getting some sweet defense on a double play to end that inning as well. So this guy is so, so tough. Uh, Kevin Kennedy talked about it in the pregame show. He's a competitor. He's going to talk to himself. And, and you talked about, you know, it would be nice if the Dodgers could get him talking to himself in yeah. a bad way. But usually when he's talking to himself, he's doing pretty good. He's pumping himself up. Sure. Sometimes like, I can't believe I threw that ball for, you know, for a bad pitch. And then he comes right back and he just, you know, he just dominates guys up there. And, Tough, tough competitor. Well, well Steve, uh, you, you bring up a good point. I want, I want to get the guys in the studio in on this. We got Jim Watts and Kevin Kennedy standing by because, you know, PV in the second inning uh, ha had an opportunity to show that fire, and I think those guys have much more on that. We'll be here. We'll keep these seats warm and talk to you guys in a minute. 